This session uh, gets rather detailed, a lot of nitty gritty. Uh, if you like that kind of thing, then there's plenty of it for you in, in this session. Right, so uh, we're talking about the subgroups of D of N, well, about to. Uh, the dihedral groups, you know, the groups which have a kind of flipping uh, of two faces uh, of a geometrical object, like triangles flipping and squares flipping and so forth. All right, so uh, to, to before we get on to the, the sub, talking about the subgroups of the general, you know, for, for general N, dihedral group of N, N sides in your regular polygon, Let's do it for 12, uh, where this number n here is large enough to be interesting. You get interesting phenomena coming up. So by the time we've sort of thought about it a bit, and, and as I say, a lot of details. Um, so by the time we've done n equals 12, uh, we've probably established enough principles then, which we can then carry over to the general case n. Okay? Right? Uh, now, <laughs> I'm not the world's best artist. Right? Trying to draw a circle-like object. Uh, well, this, this, this is. These, these are three uh, duodecagons, right? a, a twelve gon, if you like, with uh, twelve equal sides, more or less. Now. Uh, Inside this duo decagon, this 12 gon, I have drawn uh, two, two hexagons, you know, two six gons, if you like. And uh, I don't know if you can see, like this here to here to here. There's one hexagon, and then you've got another one here to here to here. Right? So, uh, you take one hexagon and then you rotate it uh, once, just by one side, if you like. Okay, so uh, you have there two two different hexagons. Now each of those hexagons um, corresponds to a subgroup in, in terms of uh, it's, it's effectively uh, you got um, a d6. Is this is it because you, you can put you can put two of these. Um, Hexagons into into this uh, duo decagon. Right? One of them like this, and the next one uh, rotated uh, one side, one, one A, if you like. Yeah, remember A is uh, a clockwise rotation by effectively the angle that gives you one side, you know, just one side rotation. So if if you apply A, it would take you to there. Right. Okay. Now we have two hexagons in here. Uh, in a sense, uh, y two. Um, well, two two sixes are twelve. Uh, you'll notice a pattern. Now here uh, we're talking about squares. Like, like here's I don't you see it here and here. There's a square. And then <laughs> they don't look very square. And you've got another one like here. And then you get another one like that. So I can put three squares into this duo decagon, into this 12 gon. Right? So I've got three squares here. And in, in terms of triangles, uh, it gets even harder, it gets messier. Uh, but uh, especially if you have the text. I mean, really, really look at the text if, uh, if, if you have one. But I can put four triangles in this uh, duo decagon, this 12 gon. Right? Four of them. And each each uh, triangle, or here each square or each uh, hexagon, they correspond to a different subgroup. And why is that? Um, well, let's take the case of well the square here. Uh, so um, if I label this point one and two. Four, five, six, seven. So down the bottom would be like 7 and 8, and here 10 and 11, 10 11. Now if I perform a, a flip type operation about this axis, 1, one 7, so it would be uh, 
on seven. So if I, if I form a, perform a flip uh, a rotation about that axis one seven, that will move my points differently from if I flipped around the axis two eight to eight. You can just see that physically, it's just a visual thing. Okay, so uh, a a flipping one seven will give will give different uh, have a different effect from a flipping uh, around uh, axis two eight. Right, that, that's sort of obvious. You just see that, right? If you do that, you're going to get a different effect from doing that because your your points will get moved elsewhere uh, compared. You know, one compared to the other, right? So uh, each of these, um, like here, the, all the flipping operations for one of your hexagons will have a different effect if you do it for the other hexagon, and, and similar logic for your squares. And so you'll have two subgroups for your hexagon, you'll have three subgroups for your square, and you'll have four subgroups for your triangle. So it's sort of summarized here. Okay. Uh, now, <laughs> here's where it gets uh, increasingly subtle, and um, I'll just throw it at you. And if you're really interested, you know, if, if this kind of stuff, you know, the nitty gritty, the real, the real details, if you if you're interested, um, <coughs> the there are other subgroups of of the form D two. Okay, so. Uh, and remember the order the order of the dihedral group of n d n uh, the order of the group is two n right so if, if d is two uh, your this group d two uh, the dihedral group of n equals two will the, its size its order of the group will be two and twice this so four okay now uh, this may not be at all obvious to you so um, so I is just the, the unit, right? All subgroups must have the unit because they're groups. Okay? And then if you have two two operations, two two flippers, if you like, you know, like of this, this kind of nature, and and their orientations are at 90 degrees to each other. Um, yeah, he, he, he tells you. Here's, here's a hexagon. So uh, take two pairs here. So one might be the vertical. So, you, so they, they have to be, these two pairs have to be at 90 degrees to each other. So if one's got a vertical, this one will be a horizontal. Okay? Now, uh, or you could take one like that, and the one perpendicular to it would be like that, and so on. So label each of those two L and M. They're, they're both flipping operations. And uh, this L, M here, uh, when you apply whatever L is, and then apply M, uh, the effect of L, L, M together, when you do those two, is effectively a, a 180 degree rotation. Uh, you, you, you can test that yourself uh, with a pattern, pattern pencil. If, if you apply that to that, you'll end up getting a, uh, effectively a, a 180 degree rotation. Now, those, those four elements uh, turn out to be D2. Okay? Uh, uh, that may not be obvious, and uh, requires quite a bit of thought, so uh, leave that as homework, right? Uh, and there are six of them. Is that obvious? Again, uh, notice the pattern. Like there are, two, there are two hexagons, three squares, four triangles. There are six of this, this kind. And they're all, like, two sixes are twelve, three fours are twelve, four threes are twelve, six twos are twelve. Uh, there's um, 12 of this kind, and what are they? Well, they're D1, they're D1s, and the size of, of D1, the order of D1, will be 2, it'll be just 2n, right? n is 1, so 2. So here are your two elements. Always, you know, any group must have the unit. And this f here is just, uh, it's a, one of the, f any, any one of the flip operations. Now, uh, we're talking a duo decagon, so a 12 gone. So there will be uh, 12 such flippers, 
Right? Vroom, 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 vroom. Twelve of them. Uh, right. So uh, that's why that's why there are twelve of these things. Um, so that that f there is any one of twelve flip flip uh, operators, flip uh, symmetry operators. Okay, so uh, add all those up. Oh, and, oh of course, uh, the um, improper subgroup. Yeah. Remember, any, any group has two improper subgroups. The, the trivial group, you know, just the, the group with one element in it, E, the trivial group, and the group itself. They're improper because their size is not sort of in the middle, you know, between 1 and N. So, uh, so add all those up, so 2 plus 3, 5, 9, 15, 27, 28. So you have 28 subgroups. You see, it's going to be by getting into the nitty gritty in the details, right? So you have 28 uh, dihedral, in other words, flip, involving flip type operations. Okay, 28 of them. All right, now what about the pure rotations, the, the rotations that stay, stay in the same plane without, without flipping the side, without being hedral? How many of those? Uh, let's see. 